discussion, and yes, you will be discussing, I know. You <laughs> will. <laughs> the teaching of psychomotor skills. And uh, tonight, our whole focus is, well, our major focus was on, is on clinical and skills labs, okay? Because those are components of nursing education that we can't overlook. And so when we take a historical look at psychomotor learning, you all know that uh, many nurses learn in the hospital, hands-on, right there. That's where, you know, especially the diploma schools, that's where you learn and nurses learn how to take care of patients. And so they learn those psychomotor skills at the bedside. And then um, in the 60s, we saw the trend for developing skills labs in schools of nursing. And so I'm assuming all of you had some kind of experience with that in your nursing program, uh, trying to again provide that hands-on type of learning, uh, those psychomotor skills. And then, of course, we've added beyond the uh, clinical, the skills lab, the clinical setting. And uh, we have lots of uh, issues there. We're going to talk about clinical setting a little bit later this evening, but I want to talk about psychomotor learning a little bit more specifically. You'll notice that these are coming up one at a time, and you know how to do that now, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. And it works It does. So as we talk about it, the, the item, I'm just clicking for it to pop up. So, one of the challenges of teaching psychomotor skills would be the anxiety of students. And that's very normal. How many of you were afraid of something in your, in learning your clinical applications? Like how to give a shot or insert an NG tube, catheterize a patient, those kinds of things. There's a, there's a certain amount of anxiety in that. And so I remember from when I, I learned to drive a car, the very first time my mom let me go to the grocery store and drive by myself, I was kind of nervous. And I'm not a nervous person, I'm just kind of like, you know, like, oh, I hope everything goes okay, you know, those kinds of things. And now I've been driving for, you know, 40 years, and it's just second nature. And that's where you all are. These things are second nature to you all, but what about your, your nursing students? It's not for them. They also, some of them, bless their hearts, lack sometimes the physical coordination for what they need to do. Uh, and try, you know, they, they're trying real hard, but they're just awkward or kind of, you know, bumbling and, and that kind of thing. So you have that challenge as well. Also, um, in the skills lab, there's no way that schools can keep up with all the different kinds of equipment and methodology that is happening and taking place in hospitals and other healthcare settings. I mean, it's just it's changing. There are new products all the time, as you all know. And so uh, that's another challenge because students have learned one way, you know, how to do something in skills lab, and then they get to clinical, and it's like, we haven't seen that type of, uh, I was trying to think, it's, the, is it the heparin lock they use for IVs? I hadn't seen that kind. I mean, I, I had a, a friend who was in the hospital this summer, and the the uh, student nurse came in and she had not seen the type of, um, do you call it bandage? Offsite. Offsite? Yeah. Okay. And um, so she was like, she was asking the nurse, attending nurse to uh, assist her because she was like, I haven't seen this type before. So there's just always something, you know, and, and she, you know, had to learn, you know, peel it off, and, you know, all that kind of thing. So I'm doing it because it was right here. Okay, and then also uh, just monitoring a large group of students. You know, sometimes we do labs with 20 students at a time, 20 to 25, in that room where we used to meet. That's a lot of people in one, you know, small area. And so you're trying to coordinate and make sure all of them learn these different psychomotor skills in that particular setting. So uh, these are just some of the challenges that we find in trying to teach students, but your part of the discussion gets to be, okay, so we know we need to teach students how to do these kinds of things, and so what are some of the best practices for teaching psychomotor skills? And this comes from some of your reading last week, as well as some of your reading for this evening. So in order to facilitate this discussion, I'm going to ask you to divide into uh, two groups, 
and um, give you about five to ten minutes to think about some best practices for teaching second learner skills. And I'm going to I'm going to ask you to get with different people that you haven't been sitting by tonight to give you a little bit of different stimulation. Okay, so I'm going to ask uh, Sherry and Toy and Glow and Randy if you four would work together. Okay, and you can move anywhere you want. And then, uh, of course, that leaves the other four of you to work together. And Stan, I guess you can turn off the camera. Thank you.